if Zika behaves as um, chikungunya and dengue behaved, and that's a big if, we don't know if it will, we may see explosive spread in one area followed by uh, a long period of lower level transmission. Uh, however, one area might be one part of a country, one city, one part of a city. So it's very difficult to predict what the pattern will be. With microcephaly, the, the challenge is a little bit different because it is unprecedented. It has been more than 50 years since there has been a viral cause of a severe birth defect identified, and we've never before identified a mosquito-borne uh, cause of birth defect. So we want to be extremely careful. What is clear is that the spectrum of uh, risk to pre pregnancy is beyond microcephaly. The spectrum includes apparently miscarriage and other adverse outcomes. It appears to be present in all trimesters of pregnancy, although we would anticipate that it would peak at the end of the first or in the first or early tri second trimester. Without significantly increased resources, it's going to be very difficult to do the kind of innovations we need to do to provide rapid testing and rapid control. Our, the front line of the battle against Zika in the U.S. is Puerto Rico. And we are very concerned that Puerto Rico could have hundreds of thousands of Zika infections and potentially thousands of pregnant uh, women infected with Zika. Well, I think it's safe to say that no state would say they have enough money and staff to uh, respond effectively today because this is a big challenge. There's a shortage of entomologists out there. There's a shortage of dollars to do the extensive things that are needed. Uh, I think. Uh, uh, most, uh, the great majority of states have done a lot to prepare, but this summit is to accelerate that action.